But K State fans are freaking out because they think that they're paying for our stadium. I wish. I wish so badly that they're paying for our stadium. Give them five to ten years and ask, like, hey, did you really, really hate when we got stuck at the we got stuck at the Hawaii airport for two hours? Did you really, really hate it? No, <laughs> no, I would rather do that than wake up and go to work this morning. Come on now. Like and then KJ puts his nuts on the yeah. rim. Lack of better terms, the man puts his nuts on the rim. <laughs> I'm sorry. The I guy mean, puts his nuts on the rim. Needs, I mean, ask Coach Self. If you ask Coach Self in a one-on-one conversation, what he's going to say is, the man puts his nuts on the rim. He does what he does. <laughs> but I also the think The guy that jumps <laughs> really high. Dad used to tell me all the time. He used to tell me all the time. Son, don't worry about the mules. Just load the wagon. Today's episode is brought to you by Factor Meals. Super excited to be partnered with Factor because I use them all the time. I love Factor. It's a quick, easy, fresh, healthy, chef-prepared meal. Allows me to be easy. at the top of my game for longer. It's healthy. It's hard to find fast food that's good for you. Factor's the way to go. Do you use them a lot? I use them a lot. And when he says fast food, this is the fastest food you can get. You don't have oh, to 100%. drive anywhere and go to a drive through I mean, you pull it out of your fridge and you poke a couple holes in the little in the in the film, put it in the microwave two minutes and it's ready. They're just fast, easy, get me going in breakfast, get me going at lunch when I'm having a hard day at work or a fast day at work. They're easy, they're healthy, and uh, they taste really, really good. Head to factormeals.com slash rockchalk50 and use code rockchalk50 at checkout for 50% off your meal. That's right, head to factormeals.com slash rockchalk50 and use code rockchalk50 for 50% off your order. Head there now. I love them. Chris loves them. Support the pod. Support factors. We love y'all. What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of Rock Chalk Unplugged. I'm Chris Tehan here with the co-host, Mitch Lightfoot. We have a big, big episode in store for you guys. It's been a while since we really sat down and kind of went over the whole landscape of college football, college basketball, Kansas football, Kansas basketball, and there's a lot that's happened. So uh, let's jump right into it. Mitch, how are we doing today? I'm doing great. I'm super excited to get to talk to you guys. It's been a while since we've done an in-person podcast. Uh, we really want to, like Chris said, break down everything going on in Kansas, Kansas, in the world of Kansas right now. Uh, I think that there's there's plenty of uh, plenty of content for us to talk about, and uh, let's get into it. Yes, sir. First off, I want to take us the most recent thing with Kansas basketball. This is uh, for two basketball guys, so this is oh, probably yeah. the most the most prevalent thing for us is the uh, Puerto Rico trip. Uh, both of us got a chance to watch those games. I thought it was really cool that uh, that the people over at Learfield and Kansas Athletics were able to stream those games. I was watching the ones on Facebook, and, and there was yep. like 5,000 people tuned in for, for a summer basketball game, which is really impressive. It just goes to show how, how much it means to, to our fan base. Um, I thought, I thought uh, Brian Haney and, and, and Greg Gurley did a great job. God, but, I love uh, hearing Greg Gurley's voice. God, what, what, what a guy that what knows guy. basketball. What a guy that knows <laughs> basketball. What's, uh, Chris, what did you think about, about the play, and what did you think about, who stood out to you on the team? Um, you know, what really stood out to me was just the way that uh, we played through two bigs. I mean, when was the last time? I mean, that's what Coach Self wants to do. Coach Self wants to play through two big guys. He wants to run what we call fist. And uh, just watching the way that KJ and Hunter played this week or that weekend was, uh, it was I mean, it was a ton of fun for me. I, I'm sure it was electric for everybody else, but it was, it was good to see the old-fashioned Coach Self kind of just grind and, it out. And, and I, think, I think Coach Self's done a great job of, of going from playing two bigs to, to playing four guards, but that was more of a of a necessity for him. He, mm-hmm. had, he had to go do that yeah. to be successful in the last couple of years, but now he has an opportunity to play KJ, who played the five the entire the entire Big 12 season last year. He played the five. Now he has a seven-foot-two guy that can play the five, yep. and that'll allow him to really take advantage of, of being the four. You got smaller guys you're playing against. You don't have to go go be down there and bruise with the seven footers. Yeah. Like KJ said, like his job was majority to box out the big guy and let other people get the rebounds. Yeah, never to get a rebound. KJ is going to do an excellent job of re- rebounding this year. I think Hunter's going to help him out immensely. Um, the player that I thought was was uh, all, always good to see is Dewan. Like the guy. Oh God. The, the guy makes everything happen. He was out there getting defensive stops. He's got more help, I think, this this year than he did in, in years past. Um, yeah, obviously, of athletes out there. Obviously, McCuller does a great job of, of being a defensive stopper, but having the guy like Arterio, who's a, a freak defensively, and then you have guys like El Marco. I mean, Jamar McDowell could get his name in there. Nick Timberlake, athletic. Like, people yeah. think, oh, he's just he's just a shooter that's going to sit in the corner. No, no, no. The guy's athletic, so he has he's, the ability. He's, he's sneaky athletic. He's he a gets, sneaky. He gets, athletic. he gets the white man sneaky yeah. athletic. I, <laughs> I think he's athletic. I, I think he has an opportunity to 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 help us this year. Uh, obviously, we've got some new roster moves that we're gonna we're gonna dive into here in a little bit. But I think Dewan, 
He gives us gives us the pace that we need. He's he's a is a very constant player for us. Uh, people were kind of were hating on his. He wasn't scoring a ton in the first two games, yeah. and then and then in the last game, the game that we ended up losing. He he broke out and had like I think twenty four points, which is yeah. which is which is impressive. Um, I think I think we've get more more of that from him this year. We're gonna we're gonna be successful, and he's got more the more of the story. He's got more support around him. He's got more support around him, and I think this year, I mean, look back at twenty twenty. We had a great defensive team. You had a you had a really good point guard who was fast, athletic, not as. Devon wasn't as good as a as a, a defensive player as Dewan is, but if you look at the guys around him, it's very similar. You have 100%. you have a Hunter Dickinson, you have Doak. Hunter he didn't show his defensive rim stopping abilities at all mm-hmm. in Puerto Rico, but I mean he's seven foot two. That's something I I can promise you, and we both can promise you that Coach Self will he will make sure how that much, man blocks. Yeah, yeah. how how much how much of a of a concern was that for you? He had no block shots when we, when we were in Puerto Rico. Do you think that's something that Coach Self will will change, or do you think that's something that he's not just not going to do? Like, I don't think it's something that he's not going to do because I, I I don't think that Coach Self will allow him to not do that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Do I think that it is also still? I mean, it's it's August. Mm-hmm. And um, there's no reason to really risk him jumping around all the time. I know him and KJ were throwing each other lobs, but it's a lot different in the lane when you're trying to block someone's shots. You got ankles below you and stuff. So yeah. I think it was kind of a conservative mindset. But uh, I don't expect him to play that way in uh, any time during the season. And if he does, just know that it Coach will, it, will, it, yeah, say. It will yeah. be handled. <laughs> it. Uh, I. I think the thing. The thing that really stands out to me is that how well they played together already at this point in the year. Uh, we look back on even when we went on our foreign trip to Italy, like our team, we we did we did well. I mean, we we won those games, but at the same point in time, like we weren't playing against oh no, NBA, not NBA anywhere, guys. Like we, not we, anywhere near. They the had Buddy Heald, Eric Gordon, like those are real guys, and the, and and the guys that were supporting them aren't weren't pushovers either. So like yeah, that's that's a that's a thing that I think was very underrated. Is that like everyone was like. Oh, they had Eric Gordon and Buddy Heald. I'm like, no, the guys that are around them are high level basketball players as well. And I think overseas guys making at yeah. least six, six figures playing in the, playing yeah. in the Spa- the Spanish league and like all yeah. these Euro Cup, leagues. FIBA Cup yeah. teams. Like those 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 are real guys that I, that I think gave us a great look. Um, those are going to be Big Twelve caliber caliber players. Um, I think from a big guy perspective, there might be some more bigs in the Big 12 that yeah. they're going to be maybe a little bit better than I would have loved to see. I mean, they had yeah, Aiden out there warm up. they had Aiden, but they just didn't play. Like, Which, I mean, I guess is smart. And honestly, like, do do I love the idea of DeAndre Ayton and Hunter Dickinson battling out down low in a game in August? I mean... I would love to watch it. I mean, yes. it'd be if great you, to watch. If you could tell me time, like, no one's getting hurt, nothing's going to happen. It would be great. I'd be like, yeah, hey, go ahead. But I don't think there's a really a guarantee in that. I think that... I think that Aiden's camp said something about that, thought something about that, yeah. and it kind of was like, in my mind, it makes sense. Like, I'm okay. Looking, looking, looking back on it now, um, I think I think that that's probably a smart move. Like, you don't you don't want anybody to get hurt in August. You're not going to win any titles in August. No, you're uh, never I, going to. I think the best thing that, that has come out of this is that our that we've realized our team is is solid defensively. You've got four guys on the court in that starting lineup uh, that that can pick you up 94 feet. You got oh. KJ out there, Dewan, Kevin, Artario, whether that be El Marco. Uh, they, they're, they're guys that are going to guard you 94 feet. Speaking of the starting five, Chris, who do you think is going to fill out that fifth spot in the starting five? I know we've got, let's just say, let's say our for sure, in, in our minds, obviously this is not Coach Self telling us this, but like, yeah. in, in, in your mind, who are our, our, our four guys that are, that are solidified? The four guys that are solidified in my mind, I'm pretty sure. I mean, in just about everybody's mind watching Puerto Rico. And, and unless just, they unless they piss Coach Self off, then Coach Self will do the thing where he, uh, sit, he says, sit Chris, for a game. Starting. Yeah, sit for a game or two. <laughs> yeah, Chris, you're going to start this game, yeah. and, and, and you'll play 30 seconds, I'll and then play, yeah. all of a sudden, here comes Kevin McCuller. Right? He, yeah, here comes Kevin, and then he goes and he gets pissed off enough. He has it. one of the best games of his career. Like, yeah. it's, it's, it's funny how that works, but... It's who, who do you think is, is in that the, the four solidified starters? Dewan, Dewan Harris for sure. Has I mean, that's not even a question. I didn't have to say that name. Everyone understood that. Yeah. Kevin McCuller there. Another for sure. Hunter there. And these are three names that, like, when I when we said the four guys who were going to start, it's, everybody knew yes. who we were talking about. And KJ Adams. That fifth spot, I mean. And I think I'm, I'm, I want to dive into this a little bit as well. I think people were questioning KJ, and they don't understand how much Coach Self love K, loves KJ. Like, he the lo- guy does Everything exactly how Coach Self wants it. Like you think he's gonna, Coach Self is gonna punish him because because he plays no plays his butt off and, and is a pit bull on both ends. Like yeah, Coach Self is gonna, 
You, there is no. Loves that man. There is absolutely nothing that KJ does that Coach Self is like. Ah, oh, I don't like that. No. Like he, even the fact that he was knocking, he hit threes when they were down there in Puerto Rico. Like what in the heck? Like and he shot. I mean, he didn't shoot that many, but he they look good and, and a couple went in. He shot a good percentage. What yeah. did he shoot? Like 50%? Yeah, 40, it's, it's, wi- it's, it's wild. You see KJ. Oh, yeah. like, we're used to thinking KJ's jumper is like, one of, is like one of the downfalls of his game. If he truly has changed that and worked with, Coach, with, with KT in case, like, yeah. the guy has a chance to, to, if not be a tremendous college player, but to be a professional at the highest level. He's, he's, a, he's a freak athlete. And what he did for us last year as a five-man was absolutely special. And I honestly think it sets him, I think it sets him up better to be a four-man this year. You watch the end of the year oh last my gosh, year. Yes. We're playing everything off a short roll. And we're giving KJ the option, all right, hey, you can go play. You can go play out to the corner. You can go past that. You, we're going to have people cutting for you. You can take it to the rim. And now you give him a guy like Hunter who's 7'2", where they're hitting him on a pick and roll and you have someone playing the dunker spot. Yeah. You're seeing how well he's facilitating the ball. He's developed that floater game. He has that, he has that elbow jumper now and everything okay. looks good. I mean, I think that last year, as much as he was not fit to play that role, it has made him into what you're saying, yeah. a professional prospect. Yeah, no, it, it's definitely given us a, a, a better look at KJ. Uh, but also it's given us a better look at Hunter because Hunter can pass the ball and he can that he can really so make he can really make the most out of KJ because those guys can play off each other and really make each other better. Like seeing KJ throw throw short lobs to, to, to Hunter is like something that we do in practice all the time and that we haven't seen in in re- most recent years because we've had four guards out there. Yeah. Now you're having big to big lobs, which is something that I'm like with dude, two like, dudes that I mean Hunter's seven two, so obviously yeah, he's got he can get up there. Wide, he's got a super wide wingspan, so like yeah. he, he literally doesn't have to jump that much to dunk. Like and then KJ puts his nuts on the yeah. rim. Lack of better terms, the man <laughs> puts his nuts on the rim. <laughs> I'm sorry. The I guy mean, puts his nuts on the he, rim. I mean, ask Coach Self. If you ask Coach Self in a one-on-one conversation, what he's going to say is, the man puts his nuts on the rim. He does what he does. <laughs> but I also The think guy that jumps really high. <laughs> he jumps damn high. <laughs> but I think if you look, and I mean, I think a lot of people have a concern, not a concern, but they think about what Hunter did at Michigan, and they're uh-huh. thinking, does he have that motor to play in that Coach Self uh, like system and you look at him and KJ and the chemistry they have and I can promise you right now that KJ yeah. Adams will not let anybody that he is friends with or has a connection with or have anybody a who's motor. playing on the court not have a motor no, 100%, 100%. 100%. 100%. So I loved what I said and everyone's like oh like, for me part of being a motor is being in shape like you can't have a good motor if you're not in shape and being from experience, being in Coach Self's You're gonna be preseason, in shape. you will be in shape. <laughs> You're gonna like, be in shape. There is no if, ands, or buts about it. Like, like a normal day for us in the preseason is like we'll go to practice in the morning. We'll have lift before practice. Like, yep. say we'll lift at 10, 10 to eleven. Uh, we'll, we'll be in there. It's high intensity with Ramsey. Like, it, they're, they're not they're not pulling any punches during during. Uh, the preseason, like it's he's not out there trying to oh make sure they stay fresh like he yeah. is in the postseason. I'm gonna try to murder your legs no, so it, that you know what it feels like to be in the fourth quarter oh, of an NCAA championship game. The entire practice for yeah for two and a half hours. Yeah, of practice. so like we're, we're we're showing up at ten. We're going from ten to eleven with Ramsey, and then we're getting done with that, and then we're heading into a practice for two and a half hours. Yeah, where Coach Self is like we, we do. The thing at Kansas, is, which is really nice, is we don't run a ton. Like we're not going to go out there and run gassers. Without he, and his, what he's saying is he's not. Yeah, you're not going to run gassers. You're if not you going to drop off, a you're ball. Gassers. You're not going to run, drop a ball, and go run thirties. Do you run a shit ton in practice? Yes. Just, there's, there's like it's the beautiful thing about playing for Coach Self is that you don't is it doesn't feel like you're out there running gassers, but like he's going to make sure the drill you're doing. You have you're gonna feel you're like you're a gassers. Like, like you're gonna like, feel like after. But yeah, you're gonna yeah. have fun doing it. Like you're you're playing you're walkout break. You're yeah. competing. Yeah. So like it you have to be in shape. You'll you'll practice from from say eleven to to one, one thirty ish. And then you'll get done with that and, and Coach Self will, will say, Hey, like that wasn't the Kansas standard and now we're gonna head out and we're gonna go we're gonna come, come back, back again at six. Yep. And we're going to have another great practice. But, like, as you said, I mean, hey, if we just equated that first practice to suicide runnings, none of us would be – we'd all be we like, wouldn't survive. I can't go back, I can't go back. But, yeah, you're competing the whole time. So then you go back and you run another equivalent of 10 miles, but you're playing pickup where there's just no stopping. And so then, hey, yeah, Mitch come and hits me hard. I'm already in a really, really bad mood to second practice. Yeah. What's going to happen? going to light another fire under my ass. I'm yeah. Gonna, like, we're going to keep on going. So, so I think he does in a good way. So, so – Moral of the story, Hunter's yeah, going to have a topic. great motor because Coach Self's going to make sure all of his practices are designed to make sure all of his players are at their, their peak performance. Yeah. Ramsey's making sure we're at our peak performance. Um, 
And how Speak- much easier does the game come to you as a five man? Oh, when you run the floor, when you sit there and get blocks, when you, you get found easy out with points. Like, like the, I think the thing you saw with Doak is like yep. he ran the floor like no other, and he got eight free points a game just because he's gonna unroute the other guy's big guy. Unroute and the other also guy's big guy. started yeah. a, started a what a fifteen zero run for us when Doak gets a block on the court and you see his it's huge yeah. like the huge plus minus person. is hey it's minus just two like, here plus two to us like, yeah it, it's. It, it does. It does so much. Well, for then us. momentum. Like you see him blow, get a shot, and you see him t- like tanking it down the court, and you have Dewan with the ball in his hands. Like Dewan's first thought is like, "All right, my big fellow just got us a stop down there. Let me throw it to him. He gets a lob. He does his little yell or whatever. Yeah. And then next thing you know, you're on a 15 0 run where the whole entire out yeah, field house entire, is blowing, yeah. blowing the roof off. Emergency story time, Chris. I want you to give us the hardest uh, hardest day of practice. Day or days of practice that you had your entire time at Kansas. I've got a, I've got one in my brain. That I mean, you already know what we're about to say. So I, I've got one in my brain that I think you're going to say. But what, what was your hardest uh, Bill Self practice experience of your entire time at Kansas? A non boot camp, non boot camp. This is non boot camp. Non-boot Obviously, boot camp is an animal in itself. And we had and a, we had a one day in boot camp, which actually may have been the worst day of my life. Yeah, but it we'll, could have killed we'll, a regular person. No, it, I mean, it <laughs> if did. we were in the I, best shape of our lives. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so when we when we get to go home for Christmas, yes, get, this is the story. This is thinking. exactly <laughs> what I was thinking, Chris. So you get to go home for Christmas, and uh, during Christmas, there's no hour restrictions because you're not in school. But you get yeah. to go home and you play a game. I think we played at Arizona State our sophomore year, or my sophomore year. Your your uh, this is a homecoming for me, and we lost. Yeah, really homecoming. Sucked. We lost, but it's that's on the twenty the twenty second night. So we get done playing the game at eleven o'clock. I got to fly back to KC. You really only get the twenty third, the twenty fourth, twenty fifth, twenty fifth. Back on the twenty sixth, and then you're back on the twenty sixth. You come back at like seven o'clock at night. Mm-hmm. So we come back to twenty sixth. We obviously lost to Arizona State. We were undefeated. Played. <sighs> we played so bad. Just lost to Remy Martin too. Everyone on the team hated Remy at that point. We love you up, now. We love you yeah, now, Remy. Love you now, Remy. <laughs> we ended up liking you, but we hated you at that point. And uh, we come in and we start practicing. We get back all at seven o'clock. We have practice at eight o'clock. Yeah. We practice two hours hard. I mean, this man, like I'm coming in being like, dang, like he's really pissed off still. Like he must have had a really, like he must not, he must have got cold. Yeah. From you're saying, like, oh, I'm going to be, I'm going to be sore after this. Like, dang, this yeah, sucks. Like this sucks. But I was like, I was like, okay, he's mad for no reason. And then, I mean, he kicks us out at the end of it. And this he, is, this is a s- practice starts at six o'clock at night. Like you're f- plane lands, depending on like Dave's coming in from Virginia. Yeah. I'm coming in from Arizona. Like. We have guys coming in from all over. Like you've been sitting on a plane. Like if you're a big fella sitting on a plane and you're not sitting in the I mean, exit row, like pl- your knees are your knees are you're already tight. So like you you land, the manager or the managers or your friends pick you up from the airport and you drive to Lawrence, get to the locker room, get taped, go lift, then practice. Yep. Get kicked about so it's a, Kick- about a seven to eight forty five practice. Mm-hmm. Get kicked out of practice. Coach says, everybody, get the hell out of here. I'll see you guys again at... at wait, wait. Seven, he said 7 a.m. I'll at see you at 7 a.m. So, and, and, and this is at Christmas. Oh so we have, all of our, we have all of our plays already put in. Like we, We've yep. got all of our plays put in. So we show up at 7 a.m. And he makes us run every scoring option off of every single play we had. Took two and a half hours to get through those. And, and like, how many scoring options are there on a single play for At Kansas? least, I mean... At a minimum, on every play, there's at least three. I would say, like, the minimum. Like, that's the very yeah. lowest. Probably four per play. Yeah, and, and if you jacked it up, you're running. Like you're he running. Was, so you turn the treadmill on, and you turn it up to the, the highest incline, the incline highest and speed. the highest speed, and you'll go run on it for 45 seconds. Like, that was just like, hey, don't mess up a play. You're going to hit the treadmill. Like, yep. And, and dude, we got there's, 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 there's a lot of running, but then two, how, two and a half hours is up, and all right, guys, practice starts now. And we go through... Our whole stretching routine and everything. So, like, we have been practicing for two and a half hours. Our bodies were already the, the most Cash. warmed up you could possibly be. He's like, practice starts now. He completely scratched it. Actually, like, we didn't even do that part of it. We go through all of, like, the leg stretching, the calisthenics. We're doing dribble drills, everything. And then we go into, what, a full two and a half hours Dude, of it- straight scrimmage defense. Like, shell drill, loose ball drill. Charge drill. I mean, it was the worst day of all time. Is that the day we went to the the soup kitchen afterwards? And in- no, 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 no. That was early. That was that was in twenty twenty. This is but but we ended up so we had to work a camp after. That, okay, there was immediately a camp, after, yeah. and so it was the Special Olympics. We did the Special Olympics camp afterwards, we did and the like Special Olympics. And dog we, tired. 
dog tired, do that for three hours, whatever it is, which is great. You want to give back to the community, but at the same time, you kind of want to have a little bit more energy than after having a five hour practice. Yeah. We come back after that. After the special Olympics camp, and then we have another, another practice. two and a half hour practice, which he threatens to kick us out of probably like 15, 20 times. So, for put this all in, into perspective, we go from spending four days of vacation at home celebrating three, Christmas. Three, three, maybe. Three days, three days. Celebrating Christmas to flying home, landing five ish, practicing, starting, lifting, starting at six, practice ends at 8 45 with a kick out, back at 7 a.m. To another, to running a, ki- a, a camp. And, it to- was, and the camp was like, we got out of practice. We went, they told us to shower because we smelt bad. And they, and said, they, and they said, food waiting there. And we when changed. they said food, they were like, hey, you have a ham and cheese from Subway. Sub, sub, subway. Nothing on it. Because we didn't deserve to have any condiments mm. on our uh, on our Subway sandwiches. <laughs> we didn't, though. <laughs> we, <were at> <laughs> really we lost are. Arizona State, Arizona State. We didn't deserve a damn well, thing. And then we also were being like, we weren't we weren't having the best day of practice. We didn't and have then, the best like, hey, there's, there's times where I'll be like, okay, yeah, that that's probably unacceptable. But no, like, we, don't we deserved it. I didn't deserve to. I didn't deserve to to be wearing Adidas the rest of the oh day. Oh my gosh. Like, I should've, should've, they should've it should've sent been me under home to my mom and sent me home with like a report and told her what I did. Like, that's what yeah, no, we were it, all having a bad it, day. It was bad. So, and then we, we get done with that and we'd started, it was our third practice in 24 hours by the time the practice after the, the camp had started. It was, it was crazy, but at the same point in time, that's when you figure out who your team is. And then, I mean, also, yeah, you figure out who your team is and it really, and it, that year, Guess what? We kept on coming back for practices and kept on having longer practices yeah. because we were showing that, hey, we mentally weren't strong. We were yeah. shutting down. We were, car- we were kind of starting to act a little soft. And like, so he kicked us out. But then you look at years like 2020 and 2022, the, the two years that we were the best in our tenure there, uh-huh, uh-huh. or tenure there, those practices. Guess what? That second practice, we came in an hour and a half. Boom, got it knocked out of the yeah. way. We left. We all were having a good time being like, oh, ha, 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 like whatever. And those practices, they, they shape you more into like the team. You the team in March. 2022 would not have been that team. That would not have been a national championship caliber team if we hadn't have been through the grind of playing, of being the 2021 oh, yeah. team. Where we oh, yeah. lost to USC by 30 in March Madness. Where we experienced this, the low of the lows. Like, mm-hmm. And when I'm saying low of the lows, this, this is a Kansas low of the lows. A Kansas low of the lows. We, like, oh, we were lost in the round of 32 and got second in the Big 12. Like, yeah, like, like oh most, te- most, most teams low of the lows is like, hey, yeah, we're bottom of the conference. Like, no, no, no. Our, our we low of the lows is a four seed in the NCAA tournament. And we still were, what, top 15 in the yeah, country, the last poll. Today's episode is brought to you by Factor Meals. Super excited to be partnered with Factor because I use them all the time. I love Factor. It's a quick, easy, fresh healthy chef prepared meal allows me to be Easy. at the top of my game for longer it's healthy it's hard to find fast food that's good for you factors the way to go do you use them a lot i use them a lot and when he says fast food this is the fastest food you can get you don't have oh, to drive 100%. anywhere and go to a drive through i mean you pull it out of your fridge and you poke a couple holes in the little in the in the film put it in the microwave 2 minutes and it's ready they're just fast easy get me going in breakfast get me going at lunch when i'm having a hard day at work or a fast day at work they're easy, they're healthy, and uh, they taste really, really good. Head to factormeals.com slash rockchalk50 and use code rockchalk50 at checkout for 50% off your meal. That's right, head to factormeals.com slash rockchalk50 and use code rockchalk50 for 50% off your order. Head there now. I love them. Chris loves them. Support the pod. Support factors. We love y'all. But that, we were just, we're, we're, I mean, I think we got a little far away from the, yeah, the Hunter thing. But, 100%. But that's just like, I, I, I know the Puerto Rico thing, we go on an off-season tournament, we go two and one. I don't know how many people were really freaking out because I don't uh-huh. pay attention to that these days. But that's something where, hey, me and Mitch watch it. We've been around Kansas basketball we good. forever. And only thing we got out of it was positives and things that are fixable and easily fixable. Mm-hmm. And very understandable that they happened. So I think that... The whole Puerto Rico trip in a whole was a very much positive thing. From a team building perspective, the guys were out hanging out on boats together. Oh, like they're it's, having a it's, good time. I was so jealous seeing them. They had the they had the yachts hey, out we there. We had we had the we had the Italy trip though. We had the, the, the Italy, Italy was dope. Was Italy was dope. Pick me up and take me out on a yacht. I'm I'm there. I'm I'm totally there. Yeah, I'll have a good. But yacht. no, it, it it was really cool to see. I'm glad that the guys are, are are gelling and meshing. It was it was one of those things where we both watched the games and like our whole group message just popping up, being like, oh my god, talking like looking into. It's just group thing. messages of teams from the past. Too, teams like, from the past. Yeah. Like everybody, all the guys are all invested in how the guys on this year's team is doing. Which and is, it's exciting. I mean, yeah. it's something you wait. How do I've waited. So back to the question. Like five years ago. But back yeah. to the question, Chris. Who is 
rounding out the starting five for you, we know we have Hunter, Dewan, Kevin, and KJ. In our eyes, those are pretty solidified. Yep. Who is your fifth? I, I mean, the thing is, there's three names there, and it really depends. And mm-hmm. I think that there's three ways that our team, or there's two ways our team can play. Our team can play in a way that, hey, let's put five guys out there that aren't going to let people score. And those, the two people that fit in that mold are El Marco and Terrio. Mm-hmm. And I think our, our Terrio starts the year off a little bit. He probably starts in that five spot because he's played the college games up to the speed a little bit more. But I also think that El Marco, out of the three, our three two men, mm-hmm. what I would say, between um, between uh, Jamari, um, Marco. Our Terrio, and our Mar- mm-hmm. Marco, El Marco is the most refined offensively. And he's just going to take time to play and do his role. So I think that El Marco is really my firm answer. When we look back and we look into the NCAA tournament, I would assume that El Marco is in that two spot. But going. what you're saying is to start the year, you could see it being our Terrio just because he's it. experienced high-level college yes, basketball. But I think, I mean, El Marco, he's, yeah, he's, he's in mock drafts and lottery pick for a reason. He really is. I, I honestly loved what I saw. I think that once he gets confident in his jumper, he's he's uh, he's not here for long. But he really. That, helps I had that written. I had that written down in my notes. Unfortunately, yeah. I think El Marco is going to be a a one and done type talent for the Kansas Jayhawks. Uh, athlete, athlete guy that can, can knows can the fly, game. Can play the ball. Can play the ball. Can be. Can be athletic in in, in uh, situations where not a lot of guys can be athletic. Um, yep. I, I think he's got a chance to play in the NBA and uh, play in the NBA for a long time. And I think so. Uh, let's go back to the, the five. So mm-hmm. we said Arterio can start. We both agree on that. Yep. Arterio can start the early part of it, and then El Marco starts uh, pretty much the rest of the year. And I think that's the most likely outcome. But I also think there's another outcome where hey, we don't have the shooting, and maybe our defense isn't what we thought it is. And I think that the clear answer for that right there is Nick. Timberland. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I, that's pretty clear. I mean, he shot, he shoots about, he, last year he shot seven three three point attempts a game. He shot 41%. No. That's a, that's a quick and easy fix. And what we said, hey, he, it'll probably he's be a one sneaky, of, he's a sneaky athletic guy. Yeah, it'll probably be one of those things where, where Coach Self, uh, he, he messes with the lineup throughout the year. Non-conference, I, I wouldn't, non-conference. Yeah, yeah. In the Big 12, it's Throughout non-conference, I, w- I would probably venture to say we're going to have four or five different starting lineups. Uh, throughout throughout non con, I would. But once the se- but once the Big Twelve, lineup, this is yeah. this is out this is outside of uh, outside of injuries, and obviously yep. and obviously those happen. But like every everybody healthy, I think there'll probably be four or five different lineups that we'll see. Um, and and by the time the Big Twelve starts, there's going to be one, and if that one's working, there isn't going to be a change to it. But if like, something needs to happen, there'll probably be one diff- one change to it. Yep. So I, I would imagine we're probably going to have an, a, a year that starts out with Arterio. And probably transition transitions over to El Marco. Until El Marco. And what you said with the four or five different lineups, we talked about it kind of at the beginning when we started this mm-hmm. conversation. Is like Coach Self will randomly be like, hey, that dude's getting very complacent. Yeah. And he's just going to throw him a curveball, see how he reacts. So I think that's mostly the thing. 100%. It's not going to be a thing where we're really struggling and we need to find a different answer. I think that he'll realize that, hey, some guy's not pulling his weight as much. He doesn't realize how bad he wants it. And so I wouldn't doubt if you do see, hey, maybe we throw – we throw KJ out of the lineup. Yep. Maybe we do throw Kevin out of the lineup once in a while. Yeah. Maybe we like something like that just to give him a little kick in the ass. But what we said, Big Twelve when Big Twelve starts, things are gonna be pretty solid. It's gonna be it's gonna be solid. Let's let's transition over. I want to talk a little bit about the new lineup we have coming in. Uh, obviously, we've got some big transfer and recruiting news. Uh, let, let's get into the new recruits and, and and what we're getting out of them. First off, I want to talk. Start talking about Johnny Furphy, six foot eight, two hundred two mm-hmm. pounds, out of Australia. Was a guy that reclassed. He committed, then reclassed up. Down. To, or yeah, reclassed, reclassed up, up reclassed to up. play. Yeah, back. Play with this this coming year's team. Uh, give us an insight of what he brings to the team. What do you think he he has a he has an opportunity to do for us, and does he have an opportunity to play big minutes for us? See, he's he's a guy that I mean. None of us really even knew about until a month ago. So there's not a. Like how the hell does Coach Self find these guys? The man has an eye for talent. That's <laughs> all I gotta say. He has an eye for talent. <laughs> Speed in Ukraine, Johnny in Johnny Australia. Did. Coach Self is taking the most lavish recruiting trips ever. I think that's the only excuse he has. He was like, hey, I asked for, for shits and gigs, let me go down to Australia, go get Johnny Furphy. Yeah, like, but I, not. I just don't think, I don't know a ton about him, so there's not a ton I can say really to be very specific, but. From what I've seen, I mean, he's he's really a Athletic. mix of he's 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 CB he's CB and Fee because the way they play, they play yeah. that little FIBA basketball. Yeah, he has a very good stroke. He's very raw, but he understands the game. He's a freak athlete. He's long, lanky, 
and he, he can shoot. I mean, that's I think something I you look just at, look for and you recruit that. I look, at, you recruit it. I look at 6'8", 202, 202 pounds. I think, obviously, that's, that's, a, that's a high school frame. He's got a good yep. frame from like a height perspective. Six eight's good for for a wing. I think Ramsey's going to do wonders with him. Yep. Um, I think you look at CB when CB started. CB was a little a little, a little skinny, and and then he put on a ton of weight, yep. a, a ton of good weight, muscle wise. Yeah, no, he didn't. I mean, he didn't put on a pound of bad weight. Yeah, yeah. So I I think Johnny's going to have an opportunity to do the same thing. I talked with CB actually last this past week, and he was saying. From everything he he's talking to Coach Self, uh, he was up in Lawrence, and uh, Coach Self was saying that it, it's a mix between him and Speed. Yep. Um, I think Kansas fans hearing that sh- should be excited. That's a pretty that's a pretty uh, inspiring uh, comparison oh, man, for for yeah, Johnny. That, like that's a that's a that's, they're, a, good, that's a good. They're, set, they're setting the bar you. pretty damn high. I yeah. I, I uh, I'd be excited to see if he can work his way into this lineup. Uh, he's been practicing with with professional NBL teams down mm-hmm. in Australia, so. I, I, I think he could have an easier an easier transition over from what a normal like American high school kid goes goes through because like when you're in high school you are the fastest the biggest the strongest yep and, and you have to restart the totem pole when you get when you get to college I, at Kansas like I, I think see. he has a chance that he's experienced professional basketball already so he he un- quite understands what what the I, uh, ask is going to be I think he I think he has a better chance to pick it up quicker I don't th- I think El Marco and them I think El Marco is probably a little bit farther ahead of him but I mm-hmm. think he's just cuz he's been there all summer He's not but yeah. he hasn't been the top of the totem pole yes. he, al- he also plays a different game yeah, so 100%. it's something that hey if he understands it and understands it fast He's going to be a huge piece of this team, and he will be Kevin McCullough's clear yes. backup, which, guess think what? Think of 6'8", 208 pounds. Who does he back up? Kevin McCullough. He, and he who do we have else to back up Kevin? Like, uh, think about that. Like, we don't really have anybody. And then he also can back up KJ. I mean, you yeah. can put him at the four. He's 6'8", or throw Kevin at the four. Kevin's proved he can play the four. Oh, 100%. Oh, that's true. He has a lot of flexibility yeah. if he does, and if he doesn't, he has a lot of flexibility in the next couple years because he's a guy that he's clearly shown he can play with the best in the world. It just really depends on how quick he can pick up the college game. Speaking of Johnny, Johnny's going to be playing a lot of basketball with the newest KU recruit, Flory Bedunga. Excuse me if I am butchering your last game. We, I will we have it down camera, over the next couple of years. I promise I will have it That's down. That's very new news to us as well. So Dude, we haven't really very new it. news. Yep. Un- unreal uh, acquisition by Coach Self. Think about this. You go from from losing Ernest and you go from... from, uh, from who was the uh, the transfer? Was that the St. John's? St. John's. You you, lo- you lost Ernest Zuby. and you, you lost Zuby. Zuby. But then you also had that recruit where he was supposed to commit to Kansas, thought he was, and then yeah. committed to Indiana. Indiana so like I, something happened that night, and we just reverse Uno. Yeah. Same thing. So hey, <laughs> so got back. You got so I, back. I I wanted to get back to the topic of you lose you lose Zuby and you lose Ernest. What does what does Coach Self do? He goes out and gets the number one ranked player in the transfer portal. And then the number five ranked player in the class of 2025. The number one center. Number one center. Number mm-hmm. five ranked player. Yep. I, I, I think it's an absolute master class by, by Coach Self. Summer Bill is undefeated. Undefeated. I, I love the memes. I, I, I'm I th- loving them lately. I, th- I think this is going to give us an opportunity to play KJ great minutes at the four over the next coming years. But at the same point in time... Everyone's kind of like talking about how oh this is this means that Hunter's only going to be here for one year yada yada yada. Listen, Flory is 6'8", 215 pounds. That is like having that, them. That is an undersized five man in in the Big Twelve. So I yep. think he has an opportunity to play the four. If you watch his highlights, the guy handles the ball, handles the rock, unlike any five man I have seen. Oh yeah. Outside of Joel Embiid, and he's lefty. And yeah, he's lefty, so like, which is a huge thing. I mean, people really underestimate left-handed. I mean, your natural reactions always go right. So my, my question to you, months. Chris, my question to you is: Would this, do you think this means that, like, like people are saying, oh, this is a basically a death sentence for for Hunter's second year at Kansas, do, or do you think that they could play together? If yeah, do you want my honest opinion? Hit me with it. You, my give me the give the people was, the I, honest I think opinion. it's pretty ridiculous to think that Hunter's going to stay for two years, anyways. Regardless of if Regardless if, if of, we got Flory. I mean, hey, like and there's in a perfect world, yes, we would love it. And we've been seeing a lot of different things now happening with college basketball. And the name image and likeness keeping players around. It may keep them around, depends on how much it depends it depends on how much and depends on the year we have. Speaking we, of which, go support win, mass uh go go before Mass Street Strategies. Mass, mass, mass Street Strategies. Them. Go support them. Uh, yeah. we can keep these guys around for longer. We'll win we'll win more games. Yeah. But uh at the if same I point in time I would love to have him. I would I would love to have Hunter for two years, but at the I, same point in time, if he plays at a high enough level to where 
he can go to the NBA, he should go to the NBA. And that's not that's not his ultimate goal. His ultimate goal is to come here and win and do the mm-hmm. best he can do. Yeah, 100%. his ultimate goal is to get out of here this year. And that yeah. is that is. I mean, he was going to leave last year if you really think. about it. And if it, you're mad at him for saying that, then how selfish are you? The guy's going to go make money and support his family. Like, go make money and support his family. And hey, guess what? We're also the University of Kansas. It's not yeah. like we've been. Love Hunter it's not a day. lack of talent. We're gonna yeah. f- we're, there's gonna be more talent. He's not leaving us out to hang and dry. And I think that everybody just assumes now that everyone's taken the fifth and the sixth year that everyone's just gonna do it. Hunter's a guy that he honestly shouldn't even be at Kansas right now. He should he probably should be, be in the NBA. NBA. If if things have worked out in his in his favor over the past couple of years, he should he and should he, have been out had, there. In the he NBA. probably had a chance to go do it. Yeah, but yeah. he just didn't. So I think that I think it's pretty. It's not a death sentence for Hunter. I never really thought he was coming back in the first place. But I do think that they would be able to play together in a perfect world. I think KJ and him are kind of proving that. I think that. I think he's going to become Dewan Harris's there. best friend though. Like, have you seen like the lob catching he was doing? And he's left handed. Oh my too. gosh, I mean, it's going to be wild. Dewan is literally just assist. Only, and the only assist. thing I know about this assist. guy, only thing I know about this guy, is from that five minute mixtape that whoever posted the other day. Dude, and, I was and you watch that mixtape like, and you're like, all right, Zion Williamson, there he's, he is. He's <laughs> the number one player in the country now. I love this. One hundred percent, one hundred percent. Now, masterclass by Coach Self, beating out some other blue bloods. I think that 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 uh, that just goes to show that Coach Self is bought in. For the for the long term here at Kansas, it's it's the ultimate. I'm back of college basketball, and I and I think Coach Self is is solidified himself uh, more recently as an absolutely killer recruiter. I think a killer recruiter, and I also think it shows where with all the health scares that happened this last couple of years, 100%. I think it shows that hey, Coach Self isn't slowing. He down. He expects to be around, and if anything, he's. Speeding up. Yeah, I think I think he's getting better. He's getting better. I mean, his last two recruiting years, and you also you got you got to factor in. We won a national championship. Yep. We got the NIL deals going, and we're mm-hmm. a big university. But I mean, he's yeah, he's putting on a master class this year. Every time that anyone had a question about what he was going to do, maybe he didn't do the first option that everyone on Twitter thought he was going to do. But guess what? That dude got a guy for yep. that spot. <laughs> he got 100%. a legit guy. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Next topic we want to get into: conference realignment. Obviously, it is changing the makeup of all of college athletics. Um, Chris, where do you think we're at? Do you think Kansas is in a good spot? Do you think everything is going good for us? Like, what, what do you think is going on? I think I think the Big 12 in Kansas is in a great spot. I mean, we were – Kansas was really – or Big 12 was really a conference that we didn't know what was going to happen. They thought we were going to be the Pac-12 where, hey, we had to either join the SEC or the ACC Big Ten. or the Big 10. We had to. Like, that's what the Big 12 was going to disband. So I think we're in a great spot. I think Big 12 did a really good job hiring a new commissioner. I think that – I think th- I think it's in my, in my personal opinion. I think Brett Yormark has saved the Big Twelve and, and given and, and given us the ability to to be one of the major conferences that brings in oh, all yeah. the people. Like we, you've seen it so far: Arizona State, Arizona, Colorado, Utah. Yep. The Big Twelve is bringing those people in, and it's only going to make us stronger, and it's going to make the competition stronger within the Big Twelve. And I think that the schools really did a great job of showing that we we were a huge conference that was not meant to be messed with i mean our football our football's great our basketball great and those are really the two big ones that everyone really really cares about from i think a, they're great from a kansas basketball fan perspective i think brett yormark has done a great job of of making sure everyone knows that big 12 is is basketball country it's as much as it is football country. country but it is basketball country baby. and we like, i mean think about the new rivalries he brought in oh you you're gonna go play you're gonna go play arizona at McHale, and then you're gonna go play Houston. arizona's gonna come and play at McHale. that's gonna be an unreal rivalry. and then you got houston and i mean you're having teams that are on the uptick you ucf on the uptick always they're been the uptick. good they're always been good i mean you look at utah utah has their years byu has BYU their years is a good team has like, their years there is going to be some new rivalries created think about the you, school that gave us ruby martin they're coming to the big 12 arizona state. <laughs> thank you arizona state and i mean you got i mean you got dan hurley coaching <laughs> against bill self i yeah. mean it's it, it's uh bobby hurley bobby hurley my bad wrong hurley but i mean it's just going to be fun like i think it's, they they made the whole atmosphere maybe not on the football side it's not the best thing for us we lose our two football powerhouses but Big 12 basketball will be the most popular basketball conference in the oh, nation. Oh, 100%, 100%. It's been the best it's been the best it's basketball been the conference best. over the last 5 years, but the I think most it has popular. It, over over yeah, over the next 10 years it's going to be the best and the most popular. Yes, for I, sure. Next question I have in, far, in as far as conference realignment, how far do you think this goes? Do you think it's going to go from being a Power 5 conference to there's going to be a Power 3 now with the SEC, the Big 10 and the Big 12? I really Do you think do you think the Pac-12 is dead? I think the Pac-12 has to be dead unless they, I mean, and it doesn't have to be dead, but 
They're gonna have. They're to not gonna down, be a power five. They're anymore. gonna have to downgrade. Yeah. yeah, I mean, they're gonna have to pick up teams. They're gonna have like to eat the Wyoming Mountain West. And yeah, they're gonna have to eat it, and that's yeah. what's gonna happen. And I don't think that they do that, but I don't understand logistically where either one of these other teams go. I don't think really anybody wants them. Unfortunately, the thing I see is next is I think the ACC is gonna be the next victim. They have, they have the victim of of the situation of the I, circumstance that's where i kind of like i just don't really know exactly but if it if it does ends up the pac-12 doesn't if the pac-12 those final four teams bounce yeah then the acc has no choice but to disperse too because it's just going to be it's going to be two huge pac-man yeah and a little tiny a little uh, tiny uh, pac-man uh, is what it's going to be and it's just going to i mean they're going to they're going to poach each other off until they can offer so much money that the acc will have to dismantle speaking on conference realignment I want to transition a little bit. How much do you think Kansas's investment into the Kansas football program and team is going to benefit us, not only from just a football perspective, but from a university perspective and a Kansas basketball perspective? I mean, you saw how much, of, how big of a deal Kansas football was this year. We haven't been great lately. Mm -hmm. And you look, we were third highest grossing schools in the Big 12 revenue. Behind who? Behind Texas and Oklahoma. And Texas... Is like, and that's two I mean, teams that are that's two teams that are leaving the leaving Big 12. because they're making so much money, and this is our first year the football team has been good. And you can speak to the buzz of oh, hundred percent, hundred percent, hundred percent. So I think I think it's something that hey, if we're gonna keep on upgrading the stadium, you realize that football is such a big money grab. Uh -huh. And now that you're having a Texas and Oklahoma leave, people are gonna hate that I say this, but the Big 12 is up for grabs. And we're trending in the right direction. Trending in the right direction. We've, we've got an athletic director that is hungry, young, hungry, wants to be the best in the game. We got Coach Self has proven that he wants to be the best in the game. And I think Lance Leipold is hungry for more. He got a taste of it last year with, with our 6-6, six and six, make it, make, making it to a bowl game. But that's a guy, from our experiences with him talking to him, he is not settling at all. He, there's very few people that I've met like Lance Leipold. And there's, I think there's only two other people I've met in my life like that. And the other one... Or one, yeah, the other one outside of Lance, it's Coach Self. So Billy Self, I mean baby. Billy Self, and we've spent a good amount of time with Lance. I mean, Lance was my football coach for a whole year, my senior year. Yeah, only let me play the the spring game, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I was we were we've been around him enough to realize the way he talks, the way that he kind of controls conversations, and the way yeah. that he that, thinks that, about the game. Yeah. He, there's a guy that's done it at other schools, but he he has he has a platform to do it at the highest level now, and he's got a he's got a university and a community that's behind him that behind is him. dumping money into yeah. Kansas football and Kansas athletics, and I think I think it's I think it's very uh, it's very positive, and I think we have an opportunity to be re really special. And I think I mean so you're looking at the uh, you're looking at you're looking at the funding that they put into this new stadium. Yeah, I mean the project. Give us, give us a breakdown. This is this, this is, is a breakdown. This is from the words of Mike Vernon. So a very reliable the, source. The, scoops, scoops. The, the, the scoop meister. But so um, it's it's a, it's right now it's around three hundred million dollars. But that's just phase one. I'm pretty sure. Uh -huh. Phase two, they're going to add a little bit more flexible seating and stuff. So this project's looking around four to five mil, four to five hundred million dollars in total, mm -hmm. and it's mostly private fund money. Yeah. So this isn't state taxes. We got a federal grant, so that's a little bit different. But K-State fans are freaking out because they think that they're paying for our stadium. I wish. I wish so badly that they're paying for our stadium. You, they, I, I think the thing that, that kind of irritates me is they don't understand how good it is for Kansas, the state of Kansas, for the University of Kansas Bro, to have a successful football team. Like, they're drinking the haterade. I don't care about them. They shouldn't get any light on this. I just had to say it because I was looking at Twitter today and people actually were crying. But we got a federal grant. But it's looking, I mean, you have this private, these private funds coming in. That means that these, these donors, these boosters, these big-time names – are buying in to Lance Leipold and what he has going on. Yeah. And so, that is something, that, I mean, in Lawrence, Kansas, you can ask Coach Self, if you want to be a big-time coach, there's not really a better place yeah. to have a successful sports team than Lawrence, Kansas. Yeah, people are bought in. I, I, I'm excited to see how it goes. Uh, obviously, having a successful football team is good for Kansas athletics in general, uh -huh. and Kansas basketball included. It, yes. it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to allow us to, to have an off-season where we can focus on ourselves and not have to worry about... Oh, 
when does basketball te- basketball season start? We're, we're, no. we're not the to- we're not the, yeah we're not the trending topic. Yeah, we, we are still trending in a way, but it isn't our so folk- focus. We're like, hey, yeah. the first basketball game comes in, and we're playing a non conference. Yeah, we're playing we're, we're playing the Division State, Two. Yeah, and, and someone breaks down every ounce of our film, and it's like, yeah. God, it's this gonna is allow, the worst gonna, Kansas team we've ever had. Like, it's going to no allow us a little pressure to be taken off, and yep. it's going to allow us to to get to our full potential. And uh, it's good for recruiting too. Think 100%. about it. You bring a recruit to a Kansas football game when the place is sold out and you got the hill bumping and I mean this new facility is going to be sweet it's one of those things where it's like ah yeah I, I went on a, I went in on a football on a football game my recruiting visit and uh 100 people 200 dude I can't imagine being there with a packed <laughs> oh, booth oh no dude a packed booth especially in a new new designed packed booth is going to be unreal they're going to be, be signing they're going to be signing their letter of intent on right the bleachers I, I, right I'm there. super stoked that they, they kept it open to where you can sit on the hill and watch games because like yep. that was part of my favorite things is like you could go to the tailgates on the hill and like you can still see the stadium you could be a part of the buzz and you could be right there as a kid I mean as a kid I used to go to all those games and Obviously, as a seven, eight year old, like I don't really care that much. Yeah. But, like, hey, me and my friends are playing tackle football on the hill, watching it over. Like, those are some of my fondest it's, it's a, memories. It's a revamped booth, but at the same point in time, it's keeping some of the things that makes it the booth. Like, yes. it's, it's keeping things that are sentimental to alumni and 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 donors from the past. So, mm-hmm. at, I think it's special. I think they're doing a great job. The the mock-ups of it look absolutely phenomenal. Oh, they look it's so gonna blow, sick. It's gonna blow anything out of the water that's out there in uh, Manhattan. Uh, it's super excited for us to to be the top of the line. Not like we already are. Not like we not are like we, already. Yeah. Uh, did you see the someone posted like had the they had the over like the the bird's eye view where they yeah. had the buildings to the right where it looks like a K and a U. Yeah. Yeah. And if I don't know if Goff did it or not, or if the architects did it or not, but if they did, hats off. That that's some that's some slick stuff right there. That's, that's I didn't cool. want to get too far away from the conference realignment talk. Yeah. I uh, I saw some stuff from Eli. Drinkowitz from uh, from Mizzou. Mizzou, Eli Drinkowitz, Dorkowitz, one of those. I have uh, been a hater. I I have not, not ever had a him. good fond comment. From his, from his uh, holding a poster up at the at the KU versus Mizzou game, and we're blowing him out by thirty to to him saying some pretty uh, some pretty uh, incorrect things, in my opinion. Um, he didn't what, know what, what he was is, talking what was your, about. What was your opinion on his comments about conference realignment and how it's causing all these players to? To have to travel so much farther and all and, and all this stuff when he's attending, he is the head coach at a school that left the Big Twelve, that left all the schools in its natural vicinity, in the closest in the closest area to it to go play in a different conference. I think that's I think that's that's pretty that's pretty dumb. I I think it's really dumb, and I have publicly been very. Hater. A, a hater against <laughs> drink. And I hate him. I hate everything. I really don't like Mizzou, but he's everything that I hate about Mizzou put into one thing. Where yeah, he, sits it, there, he runs his mouth, he runs away from stuff, and he's a sellout. But he's like, a how do you sellout. how do you come say this stuff and then not realize there that was like no you are the person that you are a head coach he, at the he, school that did this? He the in Mizzou and Texas A and M and Nebraska, they really started the whole conference transition thing. No one really thought. That it was really going to be a thing in this modern era. He isn't directly involved in it, so I won't hold that against him. But I think that he, everything that he said was just him trying to be like, feel the emotion, to be like opposed to this and fight the power. I just think he's a sellout. He'll say anything to make him seem like he's a cool, good dude. I'm really, I'm really attacking his character, but I mean, like, I, we watched it before he got on here, and I watched it earlier. I mean, like, he has no stats to back it up. He doesn't explain on anything. He's just like, what man, is this doing of, to the players? Think I mean, about the athletes, man. They have to go now. Now the people, kids, have to go to Arizona during winter. Like they would never want to go to Arizona during the winter. Like, like dude, dude, like come on now. It's, like it's, you're just saying. Talk we are there to play college athletics. We are going to travel to games. We are going to play games, and we are going to travel home. Like and it's 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 part of what happens when you play a college sport. And yes, don't get me wrong. It sucks. You have to travel, and you got to be on a bus, and you got to be on a plane. But at the same point in time. You're getting those the opportunity the to play. Co- they, 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 some, those are some of the best memories I have. He's crying about like, we, college we would get, athletes. Yeah, we would get a we would get a, a storm delay and have to sit on a plane for three hours, and we're bumping music. With everybody's best hanging friends, out, like chilling with your best friends. Like you're acting like we're in prison. Like we're, we're in it, prison. No, dude, we are sitting there. We're having, college athletes. <laughs> they're gonna think about this for the rest of their lives. Like this is like Kansas <laughs> basketball. I, I hope that better things happen to us in our lives. Yeah, but, like the most fun you could possibly have, and everyone was jealous of my life. Playing at the University of Kansas is a 
Dude, I, was, I wish that they could pull. You're gonna cry about it? I wish that they could pull all ex college athletes and be like, do you wish you could go back to give those them, experiences? Give them, give them, hey, don't do it right out of they leave. Don't be like the after hey, the no, last no, 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 give them, give them 10 years. Give them, yeah, give them five to 10 years and ask, like, hey, did you really, really hate when we got You're stuck at the we got stuck at the Hawaii airport for two hours? Did you really, really hate it? No, <laughs> no, I would rather do that than wake up and go to work this morning. Come on now, yeah. So, <laughs> so off, that was that was a, that was a great way to describe that. Situation. I told you if you brought that up, though, I was gonna be yeah. Hot. No, it was good. That's what we needed, Chris. That's what we needed, Chris. Uh, I wanted to knock out one personal piece of uh, information for me. I want to give you guys an update. I uh, am still chasing the basketball dream. I'm headed off to, to go play again in Belgium. I've signed with a team, the Kangaroos in Mechelen, uh, Belgium, right between Antwerp and Brussels. Uh, super excited to go out there, play basketball another, another year. What that means for the podcast, though, is we will continue to do it. Yeah. Uh, we, we've, we're not leaving. And, yeah, we're not leaving. <laughs> we're not leaving. But Mercury's done, done an amazing job of, of, of showing me their support and, and allowing me to chase my dream. So I'm, I'm super Super stoked to be able to continue to do the podcast, continue to help create as much content for you guys as possible, and give you guys an inside look of, of what it means to, to be a part of that Kansas basketball family. Uh, I appreciate all your guys' support. It means the world to me. This next coming year is going to be a good one. Uh, hit me up with any questions you have about that experience. Yeah. We're going to dive into that a little bit once we get over there and, and do some podcasts over there. We'll do a day in the life of Mitch Life. Yeah, a day I in the life I of Mitch Life. won't be in Belgian Belgium, waffle, but... Belgian beer, and Belgian <laughs> chocolate, baby. Here we go. And a little bit of basketball spring. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, it's going to be amazing. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sad to be leaving my co-host here in the States, but yep. but uh, we'll, we'll, keep it, uh, we'll keep it up to date. Uh, getting married this weekend. Chris is my yeah. best man. Congrats to Mitch Life. He's 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 got a he's got. I've heard he's got a killer uh, uh, best man speech. So we'll have to record that and uh, send that to you guys if it's uh. It'll be appropriate. If, if, if it's PG enough. Hey, I, don't get me wrong. I have I've had lack of a, a lack of a filter in my. <laughs> you past. have way too many. You have way too much ammo about me though. Like I'm I, so I scared. Saw I saw something the other day where it was like a best man speech is not a speech to make all the tents all about themselves. It should be a toast. And so, hey, it's not going to be outrageous. I can promise you that right now. I've been practicing. I've been nervous about it. It will be a good speech. Congrats to Mitch. I mean, I can't wait to, to be there for this moment. Big things happening for him and his life. And Who would have hey, thought, we, Chris? Who would have thought Mitch would be here? Met her at the Hawk, baby. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Shout out to the Hawk. Let's go. <laughs> but the moral is the moral we're trying to say here right now is, hey, we love you guys. And we love what we've been going on here. And we will not continue. We will not stop continuing to put out episodes for you guys and doing the things that we love no matter what happens over this next couple of years. So, hey, we're here to stay. Mercury's given us a great platform, and we love what we do. We love the fans. We love the feedback. So continue showing us love, and we'll continue showing you love. Quick uh, quick uh, update. New Charlie Hustle football gear. Go Sick. get it. Head to charliehustle.com. They're the best in the game. We love Charlie Hustle. That's all I wear. Um, yeah. we, were making, we were packing for Belgium, and, and uh, my fiancé was actually like, could you pack any more Charlie Hustle if you tried? Like, I may have a 50-pound suitcase of just Charlie Hustle. So it's, it's, it's the best in the game. Go hit them up. We love them. I'm sure you guys will as well. Uh, get your gear for this coming season. It's going to be a good one. Yeah, man, we're, you're going to see us in a lot more. Charlie Hustle gear, Mitch in Belgium with Charlie Hustle gear, getting that promoting out worldwide. Oh, yeah. And oh, me yeah. here in the studio in my parents' basement, getting <laughs> some Charlie Hustle gear in. But, hey, guys, it was a great episode. We, we hit a lot of stuff. I mean, I'm sure we rambled a little bit. It's the first time we've done a live episode by in ourselves a in a while. So, uh, But thank you for sticking with us. That's another episode of Rock Chalk Unplugged.